called six witnesses to the stand who testified that they knew of no plot to discredit McKee and that they thought he could get a fair trial in Dallas County. So Judge Meade's refusal to move the trial out of Dallas came this afternoon without elaboration. Defense Attorney Alexander said, now it's the state's turn to play the ball game. Well, the first inning of that ball game begins with jury selection tomorrow morning. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move at the Dallas County Courthouse. The commissioner's court is not a tribunal, and if anyone has any information of illegal, improper activity on the part of anyone, they should go to the grand jury and present that information and let the guilty be punished and the innocent be cleared. Now, some of the commissioner court members have some information due to a closed-door meeting Friday, so supposedly. It, would it be one of the commissioner court members' duty to go to the grand jury with this? I think it's the duty of any citizen in this county to go to the grand jury if they have any information, whether it's a member of the commissioner's court or not. I want you to watch a man at work under extreme pressure. It was just a scrimmage condition field goal, but it was 40 yards long, and it was good. And the pressure we speak of comes from the hot foot of Tony Fritch. He's after Mike Clark's job. My competition is something that you're very familiar with. Uh, you've had it all of your life, but this is kind of a serious threat to you this year. Uh, do you agree with Tony who says that it'll all be up in the preseason? Uh, yes, I do, Vern. Uh, we're hitting pretty well equal all during practice, and we have been since the first day we got here. And I believe uh, that Bobby has mentioned the fact, and Coach Landry, that uh, everything will be worked out during the, the exhibition season uh, in the games when it really counts. You can write a whole lot of stuff down on paper, but you get behind the line and everything popping, and uh, uh, that's where the story is. You know, kind of ironic that the, the first such confrontation between the two of you goes back to what I guess has to be one of the low points in your life, Soldier's Field in <laughs> Chicago. That's true. I've been thinking a little bit about that and trying to get over uh, uh, several ideas and several years of experiences in uh, uh, Chicago. Uh, I guess it just goes along with the mental preparation of the game uh, to get ready and get over things like that. Have you taken any kind of a different approach this year because of the intensity of the competition? Well, I really haven't uh, changed my style or anything. It's just, uh, again, mental preparation. And uh, they said that I have the job until somebody beats me out, and so I'm just maintaining that idea and uh, uh, not worrying about anybody or anything like I did last year and just going ahead and kicking the ball. The confrontation between Mike Clark and Tony Fritch will be one of the hottest in training camp. There's also a tough confrontation taking place among the punters, Mar Bateman and Ron Woodby. And we'll talk about that tomorrow night. From Thousand Oaks, California, Vern Lundquist for Channel 8 Sports with the Dallas Cowboys. The threat comes from the right side of the ball. The threat is to Mike Clark's job, and it comes from the Austrian fireplug, Tony Fritsch in his second year with the Cowboys, and he says he kicked the ball real good. Yeah, I kick uh, before the season start, uh, two and a half months in Dallas, in Texas Stadium and on the practice field on the forest lane, and now we work out uh, every day in the morning, we work on the kickoff and afternoon on the field goals, and that's, I think, a I'm better as the last year. What uh, what changes have been made, if any? Have you have you changed your approach to how you're doing it? Yeah, uh, now I know the rule about American football. I know now all the guys, the player, and for me it's more easy. I kick, and uh, that's more. I have more routine now in kicking. Tony, are you still confident that you're you're going to be accurate, say from 50 yards on in? 50 yards is no problem to you. I think uh, when I like make the team and uh, 
be the best in, in the league, I must make from 50. Can you do that? I hope, uh, sure I can do this. Sure, everybody can make a mistake, but I think 50 yards is okay. You know, it had to be a little frustrating for you last year. You come in in the St. Louis game, and you're the hero of not only Dallas, but all of Texas and perhaps the country, and then the pulled hamstring. I suppose that's one of the most disappointing things that's ever happened to you. Yeah, that was a bad last uh, last season with uh, where I pulled the hamstring. But now I learn from the mistake, and I go real care with my legs. You know, Tony says the preseason will tell the story. I'm sure Mike Clark will indicate the same, and we'll talk with Mike on our 10 o'clock telecast tonight. From Thousand Oaks, California, Vern Lundquist for Channel 8 Sports with the Dallas Cowboys. No good, one three. Excellent, good. Well, there's no truth to these uh, accusations whatsoever. There's no, no facts behind them. What do you want done? Well, they, they've accused me of several things, and I believe that if there were any fact behind these things, they should take them to the proper authorities and let's be getting it settled one time for all. The former Crime Commission president lost his motion today to move his embezzlement trial out of Dallas County. Judge John Mead ordered McKee to stand trial here on charges of embezzling some $3,000 from the Dallas Scottish Rite. However, the judge ran interference for McKee this morning outside the courtroom, ordering television cameramen to stand back, don't crowd McKee. Defense attorney Bill Alexander had complained of press harassment. All day long, Alexander pounded down on the idea that McKee could not get a fair trial in Dallas County because of all the adverse newspaper and television publicity. That publicity, he charged, came from District Attorney Henry Wade and Police Chief Frank Dyson, who conspired, he said, to ruin McKee's reputation. The 600 weapons were those confiscated by the Dallas Police Department over the past six months. Every caliber, shape, and size pistol, shotgun, and knife were in evidence 
as representatives of the Dallas Crime Commission's gun destruction section checked each box for verification. The weapons were then loaded into the bucket of a crane at the Liberty Ironworks Company on Northwest Moreland for their trip into oblivion. The shredder, as it's called, chewed up the weapons along with several automobiles spitting out the wreckage in record time. 45 seconds was all it took for the trip from the first part of the shredder across the conveyor belts to a special pile on the ground. The debris was then combed through for the possibility, remote as it may seem, that some part of the weapon came out whole. Only several very small parts, as expected, survived the ordeal. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move. Dallas Federal Reserve Bank President Philip Caldwell says your checks won't hold two or three days like they used to come August 1st. The bank is beginning a three-shift, 24-hour-a-day check clearing system, which Caldwell says should clear all checks within 24 hours. In the past, these checks have been handled uh, in a daytime manner to a large extent. We expect roughly 700,000 checks to be processed per night. Uh, maybe half of those we would have processed in the daytime anyway. The other half will come from the uh, commercial banks and checks which would have been cleared directly from one commercial bank to another. Reserve Bank President Philip Caldwell says the new system, the first one in this district, should mean quicker credit and should drastically cut into the amount of money that floats. Floating money is cash that can't be used because checks are in the process of being cleared by the bank. Eventually, 300 banks within a 110-mile radius of Dallas will be part of the new system. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News, on the move. Uh, we will run a wishbone type of offense and throw the ball quite a bit. We'll be basically using the wishbone offense and we'll use a few variations. What will your defense be like? Again, we'll be basic in our defense. This is uh, due to an agreement that Coach Andrews and I have made to minimize the teaching. I think we're looking at a situation with the youngsters uh, being able to learn and effectively execute in a short period of time. We'll run a 6-1 defense, which is a pro-type defense, but they're it's just cutting down on the stunts is what it's doing to keep it keep it as simple as, as it could be because of the blocking. Now in the secondary, we'll run a man cover and then we'll run a zone cover also. Who will your uh, starting quarterback be? Right now our starting quarterback will be Chuck Benefield from Mesquite, who is a very good one, by the way, and who has had experience with running the wishbone. Our quarterback uh, situation has not been decided as of yet. Right now I'd say that a youngster named Reggie Anderson, who is signed with Rice University, who went to Eastern Hills High School in Fort Worth has the edge. Reggie's 6'3", uh, 195, and has good speed, has a good throwing arm. We have promoted more women to the point where they feel in another couple of years they will be qualified to run. And the fact that we have enlightened more women at this point, I think they will be a little more sensitive and more critical of who they vote for in the fall. Are women well organized as a political force for this year's campaign? 
they're beginning to be. It, we may be a little short on time right now, but we really have started.